Hi everyone, my name is Pauline. As a nuclear medicine resident, I often see patients with prostate cancer. This is why I made a series of videos in which I explain everything related to the prostate. From benign prosthetic hyperplasia, to prostate cancer, to some important diagnostic tools. You can choose to watch them all, or you can go to the playlist and watch the videos that seem interesting to you. In this video, I will tell you how you as a doctor can treat patients with prostate cancer. The treatment options include active surveillance, local therapies such as surgery, radiation therapy and brachytherapy, and systematic therapies such as chemotherapy and hormone therapy. Active surveillance is appropriate for many asymptomatic patients with low-risk localized prostate cancer or if life-limiting disorders coexist. In these patients, the risk of death because of other causes is greater than that due to prostate cancer. This approach requires periodic rectal examinations and PSA measurements. In healthy younger men with low-risk cancer, active surveillance also requires periodic biopsies. The optimal interval between biopsies has not been established, but most experts agree that it should be every one to two years, possibly less frequently if biopsies have been repeatedly negative. If the cancer progresses, treatment is required. About 30% of patients undergoing active surveillance eventually require therapy. And in older men, active surveillance results in the same overall survival rate as surgery. Local therapy is aimed at curing prostate cancer and may thus also be called definitive therapy. Radical prostatectomy, external beam radiation therapy and brachytherapy are the primary options. Radical prostatectomy is an operation in which the surgeon removes the entire prostate gland with the seminal vesicles and the regional lymph nodes. This is useful for tumors that are confined to the prostate and is usually not done if staging shows that the cancer has already spread. In men whose prostate cancer is found to be aggressive at the time of the surgery and whose PSA increases, consideration is being given to radiation therapy with hormone therapy after surgery. A prostatectomy may lead to permanent erectile dysfunction and urinary incontinence. Erectile dysfunction may occur because the nerves to the penis that control erection run across the prostate and may be damaged during surgery. Incontinence may occur because part of the sphincter that closes the opening at the bottom of the bladder must be removed during surgery. Two forms of radiation therapy are used to treat prostate cancer. External beam radiation therapy and brachytherapy. Radiation doesn't kill cancer cells immediately, but it causes their DNA to take a big hit and sabotages their ability to reproduce. The damaged cancer cells die off and the body gets rid of them. Normal cells are affected by the radiation therapy too, but they are able to repair themselves. External beam therapy, as its name suggests, means high-energy beams of radiation delivered from the outside. External beam radiation therapy is usually given 5 days per week for 7 to 8 weeks. It has a role in different stages of prostate cancer. It may be used as a curative treatment in men with localized prostate cancer, or after surgery if there's still cancer tissue left, or in treatment of painful bone metastasis in advanced prostate cancer. Radiation therapy is then usually combined with 2 to 3 years of hormonal therapy because it has been shown to make a significant improvement in survival compared to radiation alone. Possible side effects include urgency, erectile dysfunction and pain in the rectum. Brachytherapy is a different kind of radiation therapy where the radiation is delivered from the inside of the body. It involves the implantation of radioactive seeds into the prostate. These seeds emit a burst of radiation over a period of time. Patients usually develop inflammation and swelling of the prostate gland, which can lead to urgency, burning with urination, urinary retention and erectile dysfunction. If cancer has spread beyond the prostate gland, a cure is unlikely. In these cases, hormone therapy and chemotherapy aimed at limiting tumor growth are usually given. Because most prostate cancer require testosterone to grow or spread, treatments that block the effects of this hormone can slow the growth of the tumors. Hormonal therapy is commonly used to delay the spread of cancer that has come back after surgery or radiation therapy or to treat widespread metastatic prostate cancer. 
Hormonal therapy is usually given in combination with radiation therapy in men with locally advanced prostate cancer. And it is the initial treatment for males with metastatic prostate cancer. Hormonal therapy can prolong life as well as decrease symptoms. But eventually, hormonal therapy is likely to lose effectiveness and the disease progresses. The cancer is then said to be castrate resistant. Examples of hormonal therapy drugs are gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonists and antagonists. Both drugs temporarily turn off the testicles' production of male hormones. This starves the cancer cells, causing the prostate to shrink. Sometimes, at the beginning of treatment with gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonists, there may be a temporary surge in the body's level of androgens before they begin to decline. This can be avoided by adding a second medicine called an antiandrogen. Chemotherapy is a treatment given to slow or stop the growth of cancer cells. In the past, chemotherapy was reserved for castration resistant prostate cancer, but it is now often recommended in combination with androgen deprivation therapy as the initial treatment for patients with metastatic prostate cancer. So, in summary, there are three standard ways to treat stage 1 or stage 2 localized prostate cancer. Active surveillance, surgery or radiation therapy. Locally advanced or stage 3 prostate cancer has spread outside the prostate gland to areas such as the seminal vesicles. There is no one best treatment for locally advanced prostate cancer. Treatment often includes a combination of radiation therapy, hormone therapy and surgery. Advanced or stage 4 prostate cancer is usually treated with a combination of different approaches, which may include hormone therapy, radiation or chemotherapy. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more of my videos where I explain various medical topics in an easy and understandable way, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to get notified every time I upload a video.